Can we have breaking news? Let's get right to it. Past 24 hours, we've seen 34 new cases of COVID-19 here in Utah. Following breaking news out of Utah, a magnitude 5.7 earthquake hitting just after 7 a.m. local time, about 10 miles west of Salt Lake City. And we need 100 to 150,000 tests a day. Gotta light my candle. I, uh, I've been loving, I've been loving candles, like, for the past... I mean, I've been loving candles for a long time, but I recently have, like, looked for specific candles for, for certain scents. This one is actually from Walmart, and it's a, a scent for me. It's watermelon, sweet cucumber, and honey. Yeah, that's right. Your boy's a sweet bitch today. <laughs> Welcome to Isolation 20 Podcast. This is episode 49. And um, I'm just happy you're here. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. Uh, th- today is a it's a it's a Tuesday. It's a September rainy, cloudy Tuesday, September 13th. And um, not gonna lie, woke up this morning, hit the gym. You know, my usual five o'clock in the morning, and uh, I get out the house by like five fifteen, and I go outside, and it instantly boom. Oh, it's kind of kind of chilly outside, and oh, it is windy. So. I think I, I, it's not safe to say yet, but fall is um, falls almost here, and your boy's all for it. Um, had a good workout in the gym. Uh, lift lift heavy, lift heavy today. Um, you know, I was talking about how I would like to max out the machine. Well, today I was like not max it out today, but um, I did a lot of reps of a hundred on a. Uh, just different lifts and things like that. So it's feeling it's feeling better. Like I'm feeling more confident day by day, um, and it's it's awesome, man. And I appreciate everybody's support. Uh, everybody that follows the Weight Down Credit Up page on Instagram, I appreciate you. I just uh, started following Frida on that page because uh, Frida is currently challenging herself. For those of you that don't know, uh, she is a um, an RB singer. I should just say an artist. Um, that is uh she's very talented she has a great voice and uh she's getting her fitness on she's getting this uh this challenge on i think it's a 30 day challenge i believe she's doing with her friend and um i started following her and it's dope because like i I love seeing those type of videos because videos of people working out um it inspires me it motivates me because I, i think i think everybody needs a little bit of motivation or inspiration um at, at points and whatever they're doing, whatever, whether if you're a podcaster or you are uh, somebody in a rock band, right? If you see another rock band and they do something dope and you're like, oh man, that's really cool. Like now I want to try something new or oh, now I want to try something different. And that's what I got from, from seeing Frida uh, work out in her living room, just in her living room, two dumbbells and a yoga mat. And sometimes we feel like or sometimes I feel like I have to go in the gym to get a, a really good workout in. And some days when I don't wake up at five and I just, if I miss my five to nine uh, window to hit the gym, it's most likely not going to happen. Me getting into the gym. Um, afternoons, late evenings, nights do not work. Uh, I could make it work, right? There's no excuse, but it just, it, historically it hasn't worked for me. So early morning is always like the way I like to start my day. And uh, if I don't get it in between five and nine, then it's pretty much a wash. But I have been doing a little bit more at home. I've been lifting my dumbbell. I have one 25 pound dumbbell um, and uh, I'll do some uh, squats. So typically what I'll do is I'll lift my 25 pounds, right? Um, all different ways, right? Above my head and everything like that. But um, I also do squats and I've been doing uh, leg lifts as well. And uh Seeing videos like Frida inspires me to do more at home uh, during just, you know, being stagnant instead of just sitting on the couch, maybe doing a couple squats. You know what I mean? Every squat matters. All right. I think there has to be there has to be some type of shirt out there. All squats matter. That has to be some type of thing. They'll probably think it's like squatters, like uh, not the not the um, the brewery, but probably like squatters, like people that's going to sit there and squat in your house. We've all had that before. We've all had the family member that just never left until you had to be like, yo, it's time to get your ass up and get out the house. We've been there before. Had a really dope interview today, this morning, with um, Odyssey Dance Theater. Um, Daryl um, Yeager. 
and funny story about it, right? I've never met, I've never met uh, Odyssey Dance Theater. I've never met any of these um, people because I'm not a theater guy. I'm not a let's go see the Nutcracker kind of guy. Although I might, after my conversation with him, I might. Um, but he comes in and uh, we, we we're talking. And Odyssey has been around forever. The the Thriller show in general has been around for a very long time. I think it was like 25 years. I think is what he said, or 28 years. Um, so it's been a very long time um, that it's been ingrained in our in our community here. And around this time, this is where they shine. The Odyssey Dance Theater, they shine with their holiday concerts. Um, and so uh, I had the chance to sit down and talk with them because this year, this is the last dance, no pun intended. This is the last dance. They are sh- closing up shop. And um, oh, let me backtrack just a little bit. I get I introduced myself. I'm like, oh, Daryl, how you doing? I'm Dre. And uh, he's like, oh, I'm Daryl. Uh, I'm Daryl Jaeger. And I was like, oh, like uh, the drink, like Jaegermeister. And he was like, yeah, not quite. And I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, we're going to be best friends, right? Making an alcoholic joke. Yeah, I mean, and uh, as I'm doing the interview, uh, you know, the question comes up, why is this the last dance? You guys have been doing it for 20 plus years. Why is this the last dance? Why are you guys closing up shop now? And he says, you know, uh, we've done it for so long that we want to do a mission, right? And that's where I was like, yo, like, yo, a mission, homie? Like, you are uh, obviously a man of the the faith, a man of the church, and uh, the alcoholic drink, uh, the alcoholic joke probably wasn't the best joke, you know, best tasteful joke. But I'm here to be myself, you know what I mean? But it was just funny. Um, but, no, it was it was a really good conversation. It was cool um, just to to hear him and and their perspective on what the community means to them right um because they've been doing it forever and so that's really dope man so salute to odyssey dance theater um i think tickets are on sale now they have to be on sale now because they, they're starting in a uh I believe at the end of september they're gonna be going up in park city and they're gonna travel down here they'll be at kingsbury um you can get more information at odyssey dance theater.com for all of my local utahns hey dre would you calm down for a moment and just let me talk just at this point, you're just rambling. All right. What's up, everybody? I go by the name of Will Wonder and I have a podcast called The Will Wonder Pod. I know super original name, but I promise you'll love it. We talk sports. We talk music and generally have some really interesting interviews with people that are doing some really cool things. So make sure you check it out wherever you get your podcast. Once again, that is The Will Wonder Pod. All right, Dre, go on about your business, whatever the fuck you were talking about. Are you sick of podcasts that just interview people with the same questions and gossiping nonsense? Are you tired of hearing about what's wrong with the world? Can you locate your nearest orphanage? Who cooked the last supper? R.I.P. Mr. Potato Head. Seppuku Harakiri. Where Where is is Mavis Mavis Beacon? Beacon? This is Hoss. And this is Hoss Beefy. Listen to the Beans and Rice podcast. Exclusively in Braille and all streaming platforms. Patent pending. Hey, yo, you're probably listening to the Unrestricted Podcast with Dre Rocca. We are? No, they are. Yeah, oh, right, right, right. Oh, wow. And I'm the real Ruby. You can catch me and Fonzie and the... They can do funk. Sweet Daddy Funk <laughs> on uh, Lake Talk One podcast. Yeah, but I, I think you have to come in more smoother, more funnier. Uh. Like... Yeah, yeah, they could catch us on the Lake Talk 801 podcast. Yeah, y'all can catch us on the Lake Talk 801. Aww. Yeah, and we'll be like, and yeah, man, hey, and they could catch people like me, the real Ruby, and people like you, Fonzie, and people like him, G Daddy Funk, wow, on that's the a Lake lot Talk 801. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Huh? I didn't hear him. I don't know, what? but this probably should be the ad. Is this, are these on? Catch a new episode every Monday on all streaming platforms. The Lake Talk 801. Tune in, now. Tune, in now. Tune in now. Hey Alexa, can you show me a new barber? Don't worry, I got you. Boogie Down Barbershop in Taylorsville is now open. Anything from gentlemen's cuts, taper, fade, or if you want to treat yourself to a nice hot towel shave, Boogie Down Barbershop has you covered. Cuts for men and kids. Book your appointment today at boogiedownbarbershop.com. Saturday. At a bar named Sue, 8136 South State Street for UFC 279. And wow, what a night.
What a like th- the card originally, right? Nate Diaz versus um uh Hosmed, right? Um that wasn't the fight that actually happened. During weigh-ins on Friday, the day before, my man came in, I think it was like seven, eight pounds overweight, right? Over the the contracted weight. And this is somebody that's I mean, he's running through he's running through him, his opponents. His last fight was against Gilbert Burns, who get who gave him a really good fight. But at the same time, like this dude kind of can do whatever he wants. And he just proved that by not making weight and still being able to fight. To the to the point where they had to switch around the whole entire card. Now there was a lot of BS that happened in the backstage um that halted a, a pre fight press conference that they've been, they've historically they have done forever right never hindered it and this dude making uh, missing weight uh drama in backstage this whole card was just a mess i was at, it was to the point where i was like yo are we even gonna get 279 are we even gonna get this pay-per-view but we did they made it happen they switched around the card uh the the main event ended up being nate diaz which this is nate's final fight within the ufc under his contract his old contract and uh, he was ready. You could just tell he was ready to just get it over with. Like, I'm ready to to just be done with the UFC. Um, but he ended up fighting Tony Ferguson, another legend, somebody that is um, on the downside of his career, right? Somebody that will always be a legend in, in his own right. Somebody that has a name that when he fights, you're going to tune in just because of his name. And um, seeing that fight, it, it, it it that was the fight we wanted for six years ago, right? But now it's not really. It's exciting just because it's any fight that Nate is going to be in is going to be exciting. Any fight that Tony Ferguson is puts his name on is going to be cool because we're going to see El Kukui get down, and you know we're going to see the Stockton slap, right? Um, but when I seen the head that was the headliner, I was like, ah, all right, whatever. Um. But they ended up having a really good fight. I mean, Nate Nate washed them, right? But nostalgic wise, him going out on top, wide, riding away from the UFC on his on in his low rider, right? Not on a horse because he's not. I mean, he's Nate Diaz in his low low, right? With his joint hot boxing it, riding away in the sunset. I think that's a a really dope way to do it, and. This is a, you could just tell the joy on Nate. I've never seen this man this way. The um, post-press conference, he's sparking up a J. He's happy. He's excited. He's joking with the reporters. He's being respectful to the reporter. Like, yo, man, like, I, I forgot your question. Did I answer your question? Nah, all right, what, what was your question? You know what I mean? Those kind of things. I think it's dope. And it shows how professional he, he is and uh, how he didn't have to bend. He didn't have to fold. He was himself during that whole time. And he's always had a love-hate relationship with the UFC. And to hear him say, yo, yeah, it's it's goodbye for now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and I'm going to do a professional, um, I'm going to compete professionally somewhere else in a different sport. He didn't say specifically boxing, but we know, I mean, we know what boxing's up, Right. Especially if Jake Paul beats Anderson Silva. If Jake Paul beats Anderson Silva in this boxing match, that has to be the lineup. That has to be the next big fight. Nate Diaz versus Jake Paul in in Cali. Why not? Could they do Staples Center? I don't know. I don't see why not. I mean, they they do they've done stadiums before. I, I don't know. But regardless, I think that's the money fight if if the stars align, Nate did his job. He left the UFC on top. Can Jake Paul get the job done against Anderson Silva? That's the big question. If that happens, they got to line up that fight. Boom. They line up that fight. The even bigger payday winner of that fight gets Conor McGregor. I think Conor has just maybe one. I think Conor has one more fight in his contract too with the UFC. So who knows? Does Conor, Conor hasn't won in years. Does Connor, if the stars align, Jake Paul, Nate Diaz, the winner of that takes on Connor McGregor. I think it I think it's doable. 
And do you throw do you throw Canelo in the mix? Probably not. Not yet. I think Canelo still he still has a long career ahead of him in boxing. I think he's too young. But a Floyd Mayweather, a legend out there, older, wiser, richer. Floyd Mayweather is out there still. That's still a fight that's possible. Now, will Floyd be fighting at 55, 56 years old? I don't know. But he still has it in him. I guarantee you that. I guarantee it. How old is Floyd? I, I'm I'm pulling out I'm pulling out ages out of my out of my butt right now. Like, uh, and I have a whole phone here. I just want to see um how old he actually is. Um, okay, 45. So he could be 50 years old boxing. I believe it could happen. Five years, Vegas, maybe T-Mobile Arena. Probably not T-Mobile. Well, maybe they can. UFC. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But um, UFC 279 was was fun. It was a a, a fun watch. I had a blast at Sue's. Um, I uh I was sitting down at the bar uh by myself, as I usually am, unless one one of the homies come by. Um, and uh, I hear somebody go because I just ordered uh I ordered something to eat and uh I hear I hear somebody go, are you gonna eat that? And like tap me on my shoulder, put a hand on my shoulder. And I was like, what the hell? Who's that? The, the voice, it sounded familiar, but it was like not an everyday voice. So I looked back and it was my uncle. It was my uncle Dave. Yeah, from my, my stepmom's side. So for those of you that ha- that maybe you might be new to the isolation podcast, but um, I, I explained that like my dad, he's with um, a woman that has been in our lives for a very long time. I think it was like eight, maybe nine years old when he and um, my stepmom got together. And they've been together ever since. Um, so I was about seven, eight years old when I I got introduced to this family, right? And so we're talking decades, 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 decades of of me being with my step family. So they're my family, right? I don't say step or they're my family. It's my uncle. He taps me on my shoulder. Hey, I'm like, yo, what's up? And I don't see them every day, you know what I mean? So I was like, whoa, like, what's up? Hey, you're in the bar with me. And uh, he's ex he's ex law enforcement. He uh, he's retired now. Um, and so I look back and I see my my aunt, his wife. Right, I see my auntie. And so I'm like, oh my gosh. And um, and then I see my uncle. Except my other uncle, he's from Jersey or he lives in Jersey now. And I see his wife, and they're in town. And um, and it's funny because I was supposed to go to have lunch or not lunch, but like a dinner thing. But I had to work. So. Um, so they came and seen me. So that was dope. I got to see my uncle from Jersey that I haven't seen in a very long time. Um, and my my aunt, my uncle that I just love. You know what I mean? So we we went and we sat down at the table and we're talking, we're catching up. I got to ask uh questions I, I haven't that I never asked as like a youngster, right? Um, because you don't really care when you're younger, you don't really care like how you met how my aunt and uncle met and and how they have a 38 year marriage and how 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 they keep that going and and how they deal with uh tough times financially and and what they think about um their kids growing up in this you know this crazy world and it, it just all the questions that that I have now that as a kid I would I would they would have looked at me like yo no let's go downstairs go play with the rest of the kids right but now I'm I'm an adult now right now I I can have inappropriate jo- I can have inappropriate jokes with my uncle he can make those kind of things in Navy and in, uh, in Marines, right? They're ex Navy Marines, and uh, so they 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 have that type of sense of humor and just old, the old school type of type of humor. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it was just cool. It was a cool experience to to do that because I don't get to do it often, and um, it was it was fun seeing them watch the sport that I love with mixed martial arts because they're they're not they're old school, right? So they 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 do boxing, right? So they're like, "Oh, back Bernard Hawkins would have got these guys." I'm like, "All right, calm down, buddy." Like Bernard would have hit the ground one time and tapped instantly. Stop it. Yeah, but Lennox Lewis had the reach. Stop it. Lennox would get slapped by Francis Ngannou. San Francis Ngannou wouldn't slap him and then he would just they just pound him. Yeah, but Muhammad Ali had the footwork yeah, so does uh, Dustin Poirier. 
And so does uh, What's his name Not Cub Swanson uh, You know these other MMA guys Like there's, there's no Stop it There's no There's no comparison Boxing If it was boxing Yes of course Bernard Hopkins would do his thing Right But in that cage In that octagon Stop it Don't be disrespectful Don't be dis- But they're old heads right it was fun. It was a fun time seeing them. Um, I uh, I was having I was having equipment issues. Knock on wood. Hopefully it's all fixed because I had to wipe. I wiped out my entire MacBook Pro. I lost thousands of songs. I'm heartbroken. But hey, you know what? It had to be done because I had some corrupted files in there. Don't pirate music, folks. Don't pirate music. Get it from a legit record pool. Get it from a legit source. Don't don't pirate last minute songs. Those last minute weird requests, like yo, Q, Q, uh, play, uh, Susie Q, back that ass up. The remix from two thousand and one that nobody had, but it was played in Atlantic City. Son, can you play that? Like, uh, I mean, I guess. No, no, no. Like I could, I got the file right here. Like yo, like you can download it right here. Here's the here's the link. Ah oh, man, I don't got. I got the Wi Fi right here. Here's the Wi Fi. Damn it! All right, I, I guess I, I guess I can play this this one song that I'll only play once because nobody knows who this artist is and nobody here has been to Atlantic City. But okay, I, I'll play this. I'll play it for you, my G, because you gave me seven ninety nine. You gave me seven dollars and ninety nine cents, and you also threw in a butterscotch candy. I will play it just because of that. Thank you. Those type of moments got me so many problems, so many headaches. And you can't just pinpoint, I can't pinpoint the one corrupted file. So I had to wipe everything out. But it's okay. We'll get, we'll regroup. We'll regroup. I still had some old files that I had on my hard drive. But, you know, just, just got to rebuild now. You know, that <sighs> sucks. Um, yeah, had a, had a really good night. No issues with that. Uh, Sunday, I did not go to the workout because wifey sprung uh, a last minute road trip to Ogden, uh, to celebrate my, um, my father-in-law's birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday to my father-in-law. Um, went out to Ogden and, uh, he's, a. they always talk about this place called Javier's in, in Ogden. And I guess this is really good Mexican food. I even brought it up to Angel and it was like, oh yeah, that's legit. That's legit. So I was kind of hype. I was like, yo, okay, I'm missing my Sunday workout. I'm going to eat bad. I'm going to do bad things to this uh, dinner plate. And uh, we get out to Ogden, and uh, the wife looks it up, and she's like, oh, damn, they're actually closed on Sundays. I'm like, God damn it. So you mean I don't, I, don't get no, I don't get no delicious carbs. I don't get no frijoles. I don't get none of this. And they're like, nah, not this time. So we were looking at, so another thing that my, my father-in-law loves is pizza. So we're looking at the pizzeria, but the pizzeria was closed too. So my father-in-law was like, actually, we just had this one little cool spot uh, off of, I think it was off of Washington. Um, it's called Taco Taco. And when he said it, he said it so fast. He's like, yeah, we go to another place and it's called Taco Taco. I was like, yo, they got a place named Choco Taco. Uh, I thought Choco Tacos were discontinued. I'm all for a Choco Taco. He's like, no, no, no. It's, it's Taco Taco. I was like, ah, oh. I mean, it's still dope. Let's do it. So we go, and uh, it's a little, little spot. Little hole in the walls type of spot. They have two. It's almost like, um, I was going to say the Martini Bar downtown, downtown Salt Lake, but it's not, Chris, is it Christoph's? I think it's called Christoph's. It used to be the Martini Bar. Um, but it's long and skinny. Pause. Uh, it has two two sides, and uh, you go in there and you you're gonna bump into somebody. You're bumping into everybody, right? Because it's that tiny. And um, we sit down, we order, we eat, and um, man, it was it was really good. Small portions, taco taco, man. Maybe let me bump it up a little bit. I had a little had a chimichanga, but it was like the size of a frozen burrito, super small. But the the frijoles was good. The rice was good. Um, the salsa was good. Yeah, it was. It was a. It was a good experience. My, uh, it was funny. My brother-in-law, he was like, uh, when he, the guy was ordering the food, he was like, uh, yeah. My my uh, father-in-law was like, can I get the Bloody Mary? And he was like, oh no, we don't have Bloody Marys. And he was like, we got we got this. Is our only local beer here is Coronas. 
And my, but my father-in-law, he's been there before, right? So he's had this thing before. And he was like, no, no, no. He was like, you know, the Bloody Mary, you know, the tomato with the, the you know, the alcohol. He was like, no, 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 we don't have that. And my father-in-law was starting to get frustrated. You could tell he was, and he's, he's like, white dude, uh, uh, works on cars, likes, likes racing. You know, he goes out, he hunts, he drives a truck. You know what I mean? And, uh. And so he, he could just tell my father-in-law started to get frustrated. So I was like, yo, I wish my Dre Spino was better right now because I would just take over the conversation. But you could tell that there was a disconnect between what my father-in-law was asking for and what the uh, the, the 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 waiter um, was understanding. And so finally, my 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 uh, my father-in-law was like, you know, like the the, the big cup. He was like the big cup with the liquor in it. He was like, "Oh, michelada!" I was like, "Yes, that's it. That's it. That's what he wants. Yes, that's it. If you're at Seven Eleven, it's called a Bloody Mary. All right." <laughs> and I didn't really put two and two together that like the michelada or whatever the michelada that it's a uh, that it's a uh, it's essentially a Bloody Mary, which is why I don't fuck with either of them because they tomato base nasty. BS, nah, we ain't messing with that. Like that's nasty. Like, yo, let's just drink tomato soup. Let's just drink cold tomato soup. That doesn't sound fun to me. That doesn't sound good. That's nasty. Yeah. It's just not as thick. Unless you go to like unless you go to like a like a breakfast spot. I've noticed that like when we were at we used to go to Big Willies or Willies before they came out as racist, uh allegedly. Is it allegedly if it's true? I mean, it was my boy Fanu. Now nah, they're racist, right? Like that's a thing, right? Unless I'm slandering them for no reason. My bad. If you work there, or if if things have changed, new ownership, whatever, I apologize. But if it hasn't, then it's still we ain't going over there. But before then, we were. We went there, and uh, it was called Batters Up at the time. It, no, okay, yeah. So I'm good because it was Batters Up before they went to Willie's. They sold it. So yeah, it was. We used to go when it wasn't racist. <laughs> so uh this is a bar that's on uh 1700 south in main street the the whole stroll you know what i'm talking about major street you can get anything you want you know about seven dollars eh, about 10 bucks and up you're good if you want to go for a stroll if you need a date for the night that's where you go so i i remember trying it maybe shoot maybe 15 Maybe 15, almost 20 years ago, I tried a, a Bloody Mary for the first time. And that was the worst choice because it looks delicious. They had big cup, big mug, nice red. They got olives, celery. They had like, you know, different type of breakfast stuff on top of it. I was like, oh, that looks good. I'm with that. And at the time, I was with um, Big A. It was me, Big A, and Flips. And we went there. That's what, That was our spot. We would always go to Batters Up. If you if you were if you if you remember those times, that was a really fun time at Batters Up. And uh so we go there and those guys, they ordered the Bloody Mary. I was like, yo, I want one of those too. Let's try it. The worst mistake of my life. And I felt bad too because the homie paid for it. So I was like, damn, I gotta drink it. So I thugged through it. Oh my gosh, that was the worst decision thugging through a damn tomato based, thick ass drink. Like a Bloody Mary. Horrible. Long-winded. But, yeah, we went and celebrated my my father-in-law's birthday. Taco Taco in Ogden. If you're over there, I think it's like 39-something. Is it north? It's north, right? They don't have south over there. It might be south, but it's off of Washington. Uh, just Google Ogden Taco Taco. You'll be able to see the taqueria. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, a big shout out birthdays all weekend, right? Uh, happy birthday to my... Uh, my brother-in-law, Skyler, it's funny. My brother-in-law's birthday is on the 10th, and my father-in-law's birthday is on the 11th. So happy birthday to both of them. And also, happy birthday to my man Junior Hammond and CJ Hammond. Uh, they both celebrated birthdays uh, over the weekend as well. And uh, happy birthday to my cousin Isaac. Um, Isaac, his brother Tyrone, just actually celebrated his um, celebrated. He actually just got married on Saturday, and I couldn't make it because I had to work. Um, because your boy got tons of bills to pay and, uh, yeah, gotta make this money, but, um, yeah, happy birthday to all of them. 
My uh, cousin Wesley, I know a lot of life updates here on Isolation 20. My cousin Wesley and his family from uh, L.A. came out or from California came out. Um, I'm not sure what county or whatever they live in, but I just assume if you if you say, yo, I'm from California, I always just assume that you're from L.A. I don't know why. I think it's, it's similar to like when you're like, yo, I'm from Utah. Everybody's like, yo, you must be from Salt Lake. Right. But they might be from Taylorsville. They might be from Draper. They might be from America Fork. Right. Same same kind of deal. But um, yeah, I haven't seen my cousin Wesley in um, in a few years. He him and his family came out uh, and it's crazy to see my baby cousins uh, grow up like so quick, so quick, man, make me feel so old. But um, it was great seeing them. My um, how would you say that my cousin's wife? So just my cousin, right? My cousin, wife-in-law, my cousin-in-law, I guess you would say. I don't know. But uh, she is a uh, she's a school teacher, but she is now a certified author. <laughs> That's right. She has a book that is out right now. It's called uh, Blurgeon, Black, Black Urgeon, Black Urgeon, Black Urgeon. Because the premise of it is essentially... Uh, the story behind her kids being both half black and Persian, right? My cousin, he's a uh, he's black, right, and and Persian, and then his wife is full Persian. And I'm not gonna lie, before before like this, before I found out she did this book, I was like, I wonder how you can get into like writing a book. What's the process? And so I had the chance to talk to her about it, like, cause she went through the whole thing. She got it published. Uh, she's a published author. She had a, a, a group did the illustration. Um, you can actually get it on uh, Barnes and Noble. Actually, it's um, yeah, it's available on Barnes and Noble right now, eighteen ninety nine for the hard car, uh, the hardcover, and you can get the ebook for seven uh, six ninety nine. Um, again, it's called Black Urgeon. Uh, Author is my cousin, Seppi Elahin. Um, so definitely go check that out. Support her. But the overview is um, Bla- Black Urgeon portrays the coming uh, together of two very different cultures from a child's perspective. It within the Persian and black cultures celebrates the diversity of, ch- of, a, of the child's family and paints a clear picture of the customs um, and traditions. So super dope. I'm excited about it. The illustrations are dope too because it's my baby cousins um and my my uh, my cousin and and his wife is in there as well Seppi. Um and it's funny cuz Seppi was like, "Oh yeah, that's me right there." And she showed me in the pit and the thing. And I was like, "Oh, they made you taller." <laughs> she started laughing. <laughs> because uh she's she's tiny. She's like 5'3", five, 5'2", five, like five, five, three. Uh, she's about the same height as uh, as my wife, right? And Tressa, she is tiny. She's like five four, five three, tiny, tiny, tiny. But um, it was good catching up with them um, and talking with them. My my cousin uh, Wesley, he's a huge LA Rams fan, and uh, he got season tickets and everything. And they're just coming off of that that season opener, that season opener loss um, against uh, Buffalo, and so I was giving him a hard time. But it was it was it was fun catching up with them. It's always dope to to see family that you haven't seen in a while. And I feel bad because I feel like you know, I don't feel like this is facts. Anytime I see them, they're always coming out here. I've never been to California. It's time for me to load up the family and get going. I think it's time for us to make that that 12 hour, 13 hour drive to California. Um, experience the California weather, experience the California love as well but i'm also kind of hesitant now by no means am i a flashy guy by no means am i somebody that has uh money by no means am i the dude that has you know a nice chain and things like that if i had that type of money i probably would but right now in california it is not safe to do that it is not safe to walk around with uh any type of jewelry on um I, w- I probably wouldn't even wear like a G-Shock. I wouldn't wear anything like that just because of how many people are being robbed. Um, their houses are being home invaded. Um, I mean, P&B Rock, he was just murdered at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. He got robbed, shot, killed right there in Roscoe. This is so horrible, guys, because I'm sitting there. I'm on Twitter, right? And 
um, I posted and my feed refreshed. And the thing that I seen was his dead body on a Roscoe chicken waffles floor. You know, when they talk about censorship, when they talk about these type of things, I'm all for censoring that. Like, I don't want to see a dead body. I don't want to see a man suffering to breathe. I don't want to see a man struggling to survive. That's horrible. That's not a pretty picture. That's not something cool. So when we talk about censorship, yes, censor all of that. Please get that off the Internet. What's the purpose of seeing that? If you might say, you might say scientifically, I would like to see what the body does. How does the body fight to stay alive? Or how does the body react to this, right? Maybe there's a specific science class or something where you could see that. I don't know. But I, I don't think the Twitter world, the Twitter space is the place for it. Because... If I see it, and I and it came from, and it, because he's a hip hop artist, right? It came from a hip hop blog spot, a hip hop blogger. Not, it wasn't something wild like a like a most gruesome, um, you know, Twitter feed or whatever. It wasn't something that like is even a part of my algorithm. But it was something. It was a part of my algorithm because I follow hip hop, and he was a hip hop artist, right? So it, it sucks that that kind of stuff happens. Now. The story that I hear is that he's in L.A., he's with his girlfriend, um, they go to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles, which he went, I guess, allegedly, this is like really a really bad spot. This is not one of Roscoe's best, right? And um, they go, before then, there he was flossing. He had a Rolex on, right, showing it to the IG and, and, and you know, the internet. And right then, I guess his girl... Tagged, tagged like the spot that they're in, taking pictures of the the food. Common stuff that most of us do in the moment, right? If I'm out and I'm at a, a dope spot and I I really like the food or whatever, I'm like, yo, this spot's dope. It's really good food. Not realizing that like anybody knows where I'm at. Everybody knows where I'm at now, right? Which I mean, everybody knows where I'm at anyway, because being a DJ, um, being a creative, somebody that's out in the community and doing these things, I'm always showing where i'm at because i i encourage people to come out right but when you are and i don't want to make this a a a him thing right it's not his fault he should be able to wear his jewelry he should be able to you know live his life and not worry about somebody robbing him he should unfortunately that's not the reality the reality is people are struggling it is hard out here Especially in California, where poverty is up. I mean, they have a whole tent city. People are struggling. And if you are looking like food, people got to eat. That's why these That's why these mansions and these houses are getting ran up in. But don't get it twisted. Those people are now fighting back. Those people are now busting back. That's We seen the baby do it. Remember when homeboy jumped across his fence and baby popped him a couple times, right? That's why those things happen. And all right, like if somebody's on your property and they should not be there and you feel threatened, do what you got to do. Protect your own. But you also should have the same um, thought that maybe it's not the smartest thing to walk around with, you know, a $30 or $30, a $30,000 Rolex on, a $100,000 car. You know what I mean? A $200,000 um, backpack with cash in it not the smartest thing to do especially if you're going to the hood especially if you're going to the hood if you're going to the spot that when you go on yelp there's one and a half star when you go on yelp it says yo they didn't even give me my order i had to pay them to get out the store like yo they didn't they even have no straws like yo they even have cups we had to use our hand and kind of just yeah it's kind of right Especially if you're going to a place like that. Don't wear that kind of stuff. But again, I don't think this is a, a a him issue. I don't think this is an issue of the people wearing the jewelry. I don't think it's a, an issue with these people flossing. I think it's an issue with the economy. It's an issue with um, people um, n- not having consequences in, in the sense of... Um, if you don't get caught, there is no consequence, right? And who's going to snitch on these these guys, right? 
I'm, it's it's a restaurant. I'm sure they have cameras. I'm sure the police will do their thing. But I, I, it's just a it's an overall over all around horrible thing. And I, I'm sorry that it happened. You know, I'm sorry that this happened to this young man who had a lot to live for, a lot more to do um, in his career. Bringing, I'm sure he has fans. I'm I'm not gonna sit here and be like, yo, I, I was a PNB, you know, fan. I have a, a few of his songs in my Serato. Um, you know what I mean? But when you see those kind of images, like that's stuff that you that it's gonna live there forever. You know what I mean? Horrible. And this is how sick the world is. This is how crazy the world is in some parts of it, right? Because there's a lot of beauty in the world too. And that's a, usually what I like to shine light on is the beautiful parts of the world, right? I like to shine that not everybody is sick. Not everybody is out here to get you. Not everybody wants you to lose. There's a lot of people out there that want you to win. And sometimes those people that want you to win get outshadowed by the people that want to bring you down, that show no love, that hate, and things like that. I don't know why it is that way, but it is. And that's kind of what happened um, when when this young man, um, PNB Rock, got got murdered. You know, the the story was 6 9 Takashi 6 9 on his story, posting, yo, you got killed over waffles, trolling. This dude just died. Not all his family probably even knows yet. And, I mean, that's how cold the world is right now. I mean, it's, it's always been that way, but it's just awful, man. It's awful. It's an awful situation. Prayers up to his family. Prayers up to... um his fans, right? Because as much as, as much as you know, celebrities pass away. Sometimes we forget that, like, yeah, they got fans, and those fans are very influenced. They're very impacted. You know, what I mean, there's some little kid out there that was about to go see this dude. Um, you know, maybe at a concert later on in the year or whatever, or maybe a, maybe he went to a concert and he got inspired to write music. You never know what impact that person had. And now to this dude, for this dude to go out in that type of way is is, is crazy, man. It's, it's sad. And I just hope that it gets, I hope it gets better. I really do. And now the movie review segment you didn't ask for. It's down in front. Now will we go to the end of the road? Still I can let go It's a natural I'm sorry, I'm sorry I had to get my boys to men on real quick Because I watched End of the Road Starring Queen Latifah Ludacris And Bo Bridges Now, Ludacris' real name is funny Because when we were watching this movie on Netflix, right? Um, I was looking at the credits And the credits said uh, Bo Bridges And I was like Is that Ludacris' son? Because Ludacris' real name is Chris Bridges, right? And uh, when I looked it up on online, I was like, oh, nope, it ain't. So Bo Bridges is, uh, Bo Bridges, he's done a lot, actually. He's always like the weird, he was in Free Willy. Uh, let's see what else. He was in, I mean, he was in a lot of different movies, TV shows. But um, wasn't he in, uh, I swear he was in, yeah, he was in Max Payne as well. Uh, he was in a, a bunch of different movies Stargate TV shows Man, that's crazy I, I'm looking at his catalog now I'm like, yo, he was in a lot of movies That I didn't realize he was in But anyway, so we were watching uh, End of the Road Again, on Netflix right now um, And I was kind of stoked, man I love I love Queen Latifah I love Ludacris, right? Luda, probably not the best actor But hey, I love Luda He can't do no wrong, okay? Um, so when I seen uh end of the road, I was like, yo, let's watch it. And so me and wifey watched it last night. Um, you know, there was a it was a pause. You know I mean, it was a quick little little, you know, 20 second pause. Had to get Mr. Nasty time in real quick. Don't judge me on my 20 seconds. It's okay. I accept my 20 seconds. You know what I mean? I, I hold the record for 20 seconds. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on the t-shirt. 20 second man. We need to take back. The quickness. I mean, you want everything else quick, right? You want fast food. 
You want NBA games to be quick and fast. You want NBA, you want NFL games to be go. Come on, man. We don't need another timeout. Just keep going. Don't run the clock out. Just keep going, right? All right. 20 seconds. Campaigning. So it starts off with a, a woman who is clearly single, right? Clearly her husband is uh, no longer with us. She's a widow. Two kids. And it looks like they're moving away. And that's exactly what's going on. She ends up moving out. Spoiler alert, by the way. Uh, I won't ruin it, but I'm just going to tell you kind of the... the the um what do you, what would you call that the the outline of the movie i was going to say the thesis of the movie but i don't think that was right um so yeah um single mother a widow leaving the house that she cannot afford no more because her husband has passed away now uh coming with her is her brother who is ludicrous and they're making a trip across the country well uh, making the trip from California to Houston right? They're going to start a new life in Houston It's cheaper to live in Texas Which honestly I've been hearing a lot of people move to Texas Is Texas that lit? Let me know Um. So the, yeah they, they're underway They're on this road trip And there is a lot of things that happen during this trip To get to Houston I won't say what happens But just know that there is um, Cartels involved there are uh, racist um, hill people involved. And um, if you want to watch it, maybe do it. The only person that really shines in this movie is Queen Latifah. And when I say that, I say that respectfully to all the other actors. But Queen Latifah, you could tell that she is the a very seasoned actress, right? Because her supporting cast didn't do too much supporting. And that sounds harsh. That sounds really bad, but it's just my my opinion, which doesn't mean anything. IMB, uh, IMDb gave this a four point seven out of ten. I would mirror that. I'd probably go maybe a four or five. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a thirty two. Um, Netflix, I kind of feel like you guys are striking out on the movies on the Netflix originals. Um, maybe go back to buying people's movies. Maybe going back to that because these these Netflix originals have been stinking. Um, again, good. If you, if you don't want to, you know, if you don't want, if you just want to have something on in the background, you don't really want to be too invested in the movie, put this on no disrespect again, uh, end of the road on Netflix, something else that is back on Netflix. Well, this is where Netflix is rebounding, but I think they bought it. I don't know if they shot it. I don't know if Netflix shot it. Cobra Kai season five is back. Um, the gang is all back. Uh, Eagle Fang is doing their thing. Uh, Cobra Kai is is upgrading right to Cobra Kai around, you know, all across the the valley. They're recruiting people like crazy, and uh, Miyagi Do is no more. Miyagi Do is uh, retired because you remember that was the stipulation. If Miyagi Do, if they lose, they got to shut down. Unfortunately, Shorty got she got Molly whopped, and there was a you know it was rigged, but Shorty Shorty lost the fight right so. Daniel Sun had to shut down Miyagi Do. This is a, I think it's about 10 episodes. Let's see. Oh, maybe it's only, yeah, it's 10 episodes. 10 episodes on season five. Um, we opened up with season, or we only watched episode one so far. Um, but man, I love it. I love Cobra Kai. I, I love the Karate Kid franchise. Um, if, even the one with Hillary Swank. Wasn't that her name? Hillary Swank, the million dollar baby. Was that that was Karate Kid five or three? I think loved it. I enjoyed it. So definitely go check it out. Um, if you want something, you know, something to entertain you. Man, I got like a hair in my nose that won't bug. That keeps bugging me. Um, yeah. What else we have? Oh, I just heard about this. Uh, so King Kong series is coming to uh, Disney Plus. This is going to be the origin story of King Kong. Now, we all heard about, uh, you know, who King Kong is, Skull Island and everything like that. But how did King Kong become King Kong? How did Kong become this this mighty force that nobody wants to mess with? How did he become the king of the jungle? Well, Disney Plus is here to answer all of our questions with a series. Now, there's no there's no there's no uh, timeline as far as when we're going to get this series, but. They said that it is happening. 
Um, I think that Disney Plus is going to be tapping into th- that that type of film origin story series more now because they've done it with um with like Loki and things like that and WandaVision, right? Now let's tap into another blockbuster, King Kong. Let's do let's do more series on King Kong. Let's draw this thing out um and give the people something to kind of watch but also fill our pockets. And I'm low key kind of here for it, but low key I'm not a huge King Kong fan. I'm sure they're gonna do the thing, the same thing with Godzilla. I'm sure we'll see a Zilla um, series coming out soon, and that one I'm more interested in. All right, that's it. That's all your bitch ass gets. All right, that's all you get. I'm. I gotta go close up shop. I gotta. I gotta get out of here. I got some things I gotta do. But before I get out of here, I got a f- new. F- uh, we got a new podcast phone number, all right? And I'm still learning it. But our new l- number is. Uh, 385-240-4666 That is our number If you want to be a part of the podcast If you want to leave a voice mail right, A voice note Any time of the day Morning, evening um, You know I mean During a wedding While you're out with the friends And you got something on your mind Drop a voice note 385-240-4666 Is the number um, We're going to play it I'll play it here. If it, um, you know, I'll open up questions uh, like right now. Question of the day. Something that I heard and I was like, yo, that's actually pretty dope. Um, You have to fire your spouse. You work together. Things didn't work out. They are just not doing good. Susie's the manager and little John John is his her husband. And John John's just always late. Susie knows that he's always late because he has to drop off the kids. But Susie's been telling John John, yo, get up earlier, drop them kids off, get to work logged in on time. Stop playing with me. But he didn't listen. So now she has to fire him. Have you ever had that situation? Have you ever had to fire your spouse? Or has your spouse ever fired you? Let me know. Again, our phone number. 385-240-4666 385-240-4666 Drop that voicemail And uh, I'll play it here on the pod um, Yeah, get used to the phone number Lock it into your phone How about that? Just save it Save it as podcast dude Or save it as isolation pod Or save it as unrestricted Because I will be playing uh, your voice notes On both podcasts If it fits, it fits Right? Pause um, But yeah, let me know if you ever had to fire your spouse or has your spouse ever had to fire you or maybe not even fire but maybe they wrote you up regardless or maybe you work with your spouse how is that how is working with your spouse i could not work with tressa and she could not work with me it's it's weird it's weird i don't think i could do that one it's like yo like i just i just licked your booty like like last night now here you are telling me about spreadsheets like, come on i don't think that'll work Come on. You were calling me daddy last night. Now you're talking about, yo, I need to talk to you for 15 minutes. I need to talk to you about your performance. Yo, like, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> Let me know. Again, our phone number, 385-240-4666. Um, I will be at Fierce Fighting Championship number 21, Saturday, September 24th, uh, Maverick Center. Tickets are on sale right now, starting at $23. Doors open at 4 p.m. Fights start at 5 o'clock. I actually had the chance to sit down with Zach and Jason uh, from the Damage Plan MMA, MMA podcast. And uh, we talked a little bit about the, the fights. We talked about the, the main event, the co-main event, and uh, the guys on this card that we should be excited about. Um, kind of sad because my man uh, Bradshaw is not on the... He, he was supposed to fight this dude named Manoff, but um, Manoff had to pull out, pause. Uh, so Bradshaw's not going to be fighting, but my man Dominico is. He's going to be fighting a man named Rubio. That's the officer. He was actually, Rubio, I believe, was on the other side of the Beehive. And um, I actually liked that interview, and so I became like a Rubio fan. So, um, But I still got to roll with my man Dominico. Got to roll with my bro. Uh, I'm excited about it. Make sure you go and get your tickets now. FierceFightingChampionship.com. They are on sale. Uh, I will be there. I want you to be there as well. And thank you. Thank you for all the support. I appreciate everybody's love and um, and kindness and just leaving kind comments. Um, I think that's something that we need more of. Like, 
leave leave a kind message for somebody if you see them post something leave something kind there yo great job on that podcast yo i like that song you did even if it sucks find something positive in it yo that beat that's my go-to right there if it's if an artist is always like i always get these artists right these rappers and they're, they're like yo dre will you check out my music and i'm like yeah of course and i do right and if i say yo that beat is fire probably means i didn't like the song or i didn't like your raps but the beat was fire that was me being honest and being genuine about it or i might be like yo your bars were dope meaning that yo the beat was trash right but again opinions are opinions they don't mean nothing the opinions only give uh weight if you give it weight right hopefully that made sense you give a comment power and typically if it's a positive one it will uplift you you give them you give that comment so much power and it brings you up and then you bring the next person up right don't be envious it's very easy to fall into this envious place and i've been there before where i might see something and i might be like yo why does that person why did they have that opportunity or why did why did that person sit down with that person and they didn't sit down with me or why you know i mean there's so many different things and that was a young i was a, that was a young dre but now in 2022 i i i realized that like that 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 jay-z lyric where he says what you eat don't make me shit so true what that person does doesn't it doesn't stop me like i can still be creative i can still do great things right in my community the community that i'm building right here with you that's what matters right it doesn't matter what so-and-so did or did or does right all i can do is control what i do and what i can do is give you hopefully good content content that makes you laugh smile and hopefully you do the same thing today for somebody else uh again my name is dre rocker this is isolation 20 podcast episode number 49 i believe Make sure you have the day you deserve, protect your light, and I will catch you on the next one. You have a great day. Peace.